This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account. So we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I am a black man who didn't know enough about my own history. So I began to dig deeper and do my own research. Black history is American history. So I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe to Teaching Black History. Story of Mayor Rustin. Rustin was born in Westchester, Pennsylvania to Florence Rustin and Archie Hopkins, but raised by his maternal grandparents, Julia Davis and Hanfier Rustin. As the ninth of their 12 children growing up, he believed his biological mother was his older sister. His grandparents was relatively wealthy local caters and raised Rustin in a large house. Julia Rustin was a Quaker, although she attended her husband's African Methodist Church. She was also a member of the NAACP. NAACP leaders such as W.E.B. Du Bois and James Weldon Johnson were frequently guests in the Rustin home. With their influences in his early life and his youth, Rustin campaigned against racially discriminatory Jim Crow laws. One of the first documented realizations Rustin had of his sexuality was when he mentioned to his grandmother that he preferred to spend time with males rather than females. She responded, I suppose that's what you need to do. In 1932, Rustin entered Wilberforce College, an HBCU in Ohio operated by the AME Church. Rustin was active in a number of campus organizations, including the Mega Psi Phi fraternity. He was expelled from Wilbur Force in 1936 after organizing a strike and later attended Cheney State Teachers College. Rustin moved to Harlem in 1937 and began studying at City College of New York. There he became involved in efforts to defend and free the Scottsboro Boys nine young black men in Alabama who were accused of raping two white women. Rustin was an accomplished tenor vocalist. In 1939, he was in the chorus of the short-lived musical John Henry that starred Paul Robinson. Blues singer Josh White was also a cast member and later invited Rustin to join his band. Josh White and the Carolinas this gave Rustin the opportunity to become a regular performer at the Cafe Society nightclub in Greenwich Village, widening his social and intellectual contacts. A few albums on fellowship records featuring his singing, such as Bayer Rustin Sings, a program of spirituals, were produced from the 1950s through the 1970s. At the direction of the Soviet Union, the Communist Party USA, and its members were active in the civil rights movement for African Americans. The CPUSA at the time, following Stalin's theory of nationalism, favored the creation of a separate nation for African Americans to be located in the American Southeast, where the greatest proportion of the black population was concentrated. In 1941, after Germany invaded Soviet Union, Communist International ordered CPS to be abandoned. Civil rights work and focus on supporting U.S. entry into World War II. Disillusioned, Rustin began working with members of the Socialist Party of the Norman Thomas, particularly A. Philip Randolph, the head of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. The three of them proposed a march on Washington, D.C. in 1941 to protest racial segregation in the armed forces and widespread discrimination in employment. Meeting with President Roosevelt in the Oval Office, Randolph respectfully and politely but firmly told President Roosevelt that African Americans would march in the Capitol unless desegregation occurred. To prove their good faith, the organizers canceled 
the plan marks after Roosevelt issued Executive Order 8802, the Fair Employment Act, which banned discrimination in defense of the industries and federal agencies. The leader of the organizers, Randolph, canceled the march against Rustin's advancement. The armed forces were not desegregated until 1948 under executive order issued by President Harry S. Truman. Rustin traveled to California to help protect the property of more than 120,000 Japanese Americans, most of whom were U.S. born citizens who had been imprisoned in internment camps. Rustin was also a pioneer in the movement to desegregate interstate bus travel. In 1942, he brought a bus in Louisville bound for Nashville and sat in the second row. A number of drivers asked him to move to the back. According to Southern practice of Jim Crow, but Rustin refused. The bus was stopped by police 13 miles north of Nashville and Rustin was arrested. He was beaten and taken to a police station, but was released uncharged. As declared pacifists who refused induction into the military, Rustin Hauser and other members of four and corps were convicted of violating the Selective Service Act. From 1944 to 1946, Rustin was in prison in Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary, where he organized protests against segregated dining facilities. During his incarceration, he also organized for Free India Committee. After his release from prison, he was frequently arrested and protesting against British colonial rule in both India and Africa. Rustin and Howes organized the Journey of Reconciliation in 1947. This was the first of the Freedom Rides to test the ruling of Supreme Court of the United States in Morgan versus Commonwealth of Virginia that banned racial discrimination in interstate travel as unconstitutional. In 1948, Rustin traveled to India to learn techniques of nonviolent civil resistance directly from the leaders of the Ghanaian movement. The conference had been organized before Gandhi's assassination earlier that year. Rustin was arrested in Pasadena, California in January 1953 for sexually activity with two men in their 20s in a parked car. Originally charged with vulgar and lewd conduct, he pleaded guilty to a single lesser charge of sex perversion. And sodomy was officially referred to in California then, even as consensual, and served 60 days in jail. This was the first time that his homosexuality had come to public attention and for which he was pardoned. He had been and remained candid and private about his sexuality, although homosexual activity was still criminalized throughout the United States. Rustin resigned from the Fellowship of Reconciliation because of his convictions. Rustin served as an unidentified member of the American Friends Service Committee Task Force to write Speak Truth to Power, a Quaker search for an alternative to violence, published in 1955. This was one of the most influential and widely commented upon CIFIS essays in the United States of America. At the beginning of 1964, Reverend Milton Glamison and other Harlem community leaders invited Rustin to coordinate a citywide boycott of public schools to protest their de facto segregation. The protest demanded complete integration of the city schools, which would require some whites to attend schools in black neighborhoods, and it challenged the coalition between African Americans and white liberals. An ensuing white backlash affected relations among the black leaders. In 1965, Rustin and MLK began organizing the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. After the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Rustin advocated closer ties between the Civil Rights Movement and the Democratic Party, specifically the party's base among the white working class, many of whom still had strong union affiliations. 
Rustin believed that the African American community needed to change its political strategy, building and strengthening a political alliance with predominantly white unions and other organizations, churches and synagogues, etc., to pursue a common economic agenda. He wrote that it was time to move from protest to politics. He also argued that African American community was threatened by appeal of identity politics, and particularly the rise of black power. He thought this position was a fantasy of middle-class black people that repeated the political and moral errors of previous black nationalists while alienating the white allies needed by the African-American community. Rustin increasingly worked to strengthen the labor movement, which he saw as the champion of empowerment for the African-American community and the economic justice for all Americans. He contributed to the labor movement's two sides, economic and political. Through the support of labor unions and social democratic politics, the plight of Jews in the Soviet Union remained rusting of the struggles that blacks faced in the United States. Soviet Jews faced many of the same forms of discrimination in employment, education, housing, while also being prisoners within their own country by being denied the chance to immigrate by Soviet authorities. After seeing the injustice that Soviet Jews faced, Rustin became a leading voice in advocating for the movement of Jews from the Soviet Union to Israel. He also testified on behalf of New York State's Gay Rights Bill. In 1986, he gave a speech, The New Niggers or Gays, in which he asserted, Today, blacks are no longer the limits, paper, or the parameter of social change. Blacks are in every segment of society, and there are laws that help to protect them from racial discrimination. The New Niggers or Gays. It is in this sense that gay people are the new parameter for social change. The question for social change should be framed with the most vulnerable group in mind, gay people. Rustin did not engage in any gay rights activism until the 1980s. Rustin died on August 24th, 1987 of a perforated appendix.